And what makes the community of marriage on this view? If that's what makes the community of like an academic life, what makes the community of marriage? And on this view, what makes the community of marriage is that in those three dimensions, it's comprehensive. So let's take that step by step. What's the, the first dimension? It's comprehensive in the dimensions of the partners united in its common action. This is just a fancy way of saying that marital love seeks total union with the beloved. Heart, mind, and body. That's what romance seeks. That's what it tends towards. That's what it wants as its fulfillment. Most people with, will agree with you on that. They'll, say, they'll kind of think about it for a second. They'll say, yeah, that's right. That's kind of what makes it different from other forms of friendship. It's a union of heart, mind, and body, not just heart and mind. And most people will agree with you that the bodily part has something to do with sex. Yeah, that sounds right. That's, that's part of why sex is, is integral to marriage. All right, so then the question is, why? How does sex make bodily union? At this point, the revisionist is going to say, because it makes you feel really close, basically. Something that's synonymous with that. It's a way of expressing and fostering affection. But we've already seen that doesn't work. That can't explain. That's just another emotional union. That's something that other things besides sex can do. If sex is integral because you want a union of heart, mind, and body, total union with the beloved, you have to have another account of how sexual union can make for bodily union. Or in the Genesis language, one flesh union. So what is that account? Here's one way of looking at it. You start in the simpler case. What makes for one flesh in a single person? What makes my heart and my lungs and so on all one body? It's that they're all working together towards a single bodily end, my survival. That's what makes them all one flesh. And that's it. That radical kind of bodily union is possible between two people, but just in one case. It's only in what our law as well as our religion has long called the marital act that a man and a woman themselves are coordinated towards a single bodily end of the whole that they make up. They become one flesh in the same way that the parts of a single person are one flesh, working together towards a single bodily end that contains and encompasses but goes beyond the both of them.